You know, I've been thinking, back when I did my quarantine haircut a few weeks ago, maybe I should have just gone all the way and shaved it totally bald. And it would have been appropriate for this video. Satriani rocks the chrome dome, doesn't he? one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. How about another now and then video, huh? Yes, I'm kind of on a roll with them lately, aren't I? And I made you guys wait so long for new now and thens and I figured as soon as the juices started flowing, crank out a whole bunch of them because I got a bunch of great albums uh, in recent weeks and months. But yes, now and then is my regularly irregular feature in which I talk about two albums by the same artist, their newest release as well as one from their back catalog. The subject of today's Now and Then is instrumental guitar rock god Joe Satriani, and for now we're going to be talking about Shapeshifting, his newest and 17th release. Now I don't know why it took me so long to get into Joe Satriani, uh, since the first genre or type of music that I fell in love with was instrumental stuff, like uh, New Age and Contemporary Jazz, and I've never stopped liking rock or pop music, uh, so yeah, in that way Joe Satriani represents basically the best of both worlds. So. It's like, why did I wait until just a couple of years ago to really start getting into his stuff? And, uh, but honestly, it was worth the wait. But when I finally did get into Joe Satriani full on, uh, after, of course, the obligatory first one or two introductory albums, so to speak, uh, I just dove into the deep end. And uh, for my birthday last year, I got his 15 CD box set, uh, the complete studio recordings. Uh, just, it's absolutely fantastic. And I have enjoyed every single disc on here. It's uh, his 14 studio albums plus a... Uh, a rarities collection, just absolutely fantastic, and I have not regretted a moment of my listening to Joe Satriani. And another reason that makes me wonder why I didn't get into Joe Satriani when I was a teenager is the fact that he seems to regularly employ science fiction themes or imagery in his album titles, Not of This Earth, Time Machine, Crystal Planet, and his song titles, Wormhole Wizards, Borg Sex, Is There Love in Space? So that would have completely enamored him to my teenage sci-fi geek self. But for whatever reason, I really came to love Satriani's music just in the last couple of years. And uh, with so many artists postponing and delaying album releases, uh, I was overjoyed to see that Satriani was going forward with releasing his, his 17th album, Shapeshifting, in April. And yes, that's another science fiction reference, Shapeshifting. One of the main characters in Star Trek Deep Space Nine is a shapeshifter. So there you go. And uh, I enjoyed this album every bit as much as I expected I would. Uh, he's an astonishingly gifted guitarist and a fantastically dynamic composer. Uh, the thing that astonishes me about Satriani is the varied moods that he can create on his albums. Uh, you have really propulsive, high-energy rock songs on here, like the opening title track and the single 1980, which, I mean, there's another uh, track title, song title, that gets me 1980. I'm an 80s kid. And uh, also, aside from the upbeat rock songs. There are gorgeously gentle ballads on here like Waiting and All for Love. And there's a taste of reggae on here on this album even with the delightful Here's the Blue River. And it, by the way, it's not here, H-E-A-R, it's here, H-E-R-E. -E, that, be that as it may. And also a bit of country even, thanks to the banjo in the song All My Friends Are Here. So uh, yeah, just such a varied, varied uh, array of sounds on this album. It's just fantastic. And then you have the crazy song titles, at least one of which he likes to throw into every one of his album's track lists. With this one we have Ali Farka, Dick Dale, An Alien and Me, which as its title implies has touches of African rhythms inspired by, by Malian musician Ali Farka Toure and surf guitar that was the trademark of Dick Dale. And at first I was expecting these, you know, these influences to be much more present, you know, and in much greater concentration. Uh, but I don't know why I was expecting that, because it probably would have made the track sound jarring and just disjointed. But on this track, he uh, he puts those influences in, in a much more subtle degree, to a much more subtle way. That You know, you can you can hear them if you listen for them. So yeah, of, of course, that makes much more sense, and I don't know why I was expecting otherwise from him. He is just so gifted as a composer and arranger and instrumentalist. Uh, Falling Stars is a standout song that has a subdued beat and a, a dark, sort of spooky sound to it. And uh, Big Distortion is a kick-ass rock song that lives up to its name. It's just got that, those great fuzzy distorted guitars, just fantastic. 
And then we have the closing track, Yesterday's Yesterday, has a very much of a Paul Simon bounce to it, and uh, thanks to its mandolin, there's a mandolin on this track, and it's just a great, great way to finish off this album. And uh, being an instrumental album, I really can't, there are no lyrics to comment on, so, you know, it's just, this is just a great album to enjoy the instrumental side of things. If, if you, even if you really like, if you thrive on great lyrics, in my opinion, you gotta break up your listening with an instrumental album every once in a while, so, and when you're looking for instrumental albums, especially if you're a rock fan, you cannot go wrong with Joe Satriani. This album basically encapsulates everything I like about Joe Satriani. His versatility as a musician and composer, his ability to craft the most tender ballads, the most full-throttle rock songs, and everything of every genre in between. So it's just a fantastic album and a great addition to his discography and to my Satriani collection. But that was now, and this is then, Surfing with the Alien, Joe Satriani's sophomore album released in 1987. And I actually got this one, this is the deluxe version, by the way, with a DVD uh, included in it. And I picked this one up uh, during Skip's going out of business sale for a pretty healthy discount. So that's just one reason why it is a valued part of my collection. Now this album may not be as sonically diverse or as sophisticated an album as shape-shifting, but that's completely understandable since this is early in his career, this is only his second album. But that doesn't mean it's a bad album. On the contrary, this this is the album that basically put him on the map. It reached the top 30 of the Billboard Albums chart, and it surfed the chart for 75 weeks. So it definitely uh, it made Satriani a name uh, to be reckoned with in music. Now, one of the big singles off this album, Satch Boogie, is probably the most dynamic. It starts out as a cross between swing and boogie-woogie from the 40s or 50s but it has some switch-ups in, in rhythm and in key that remind me a lot of Frank Zappa. So it's just a very, very dynamic song. It's one of his most dynamic, I think, in his entire discography. And on the ballad side of things is another single off the album, Always With Me, Always With You, which is a very slow and smooth and kind of sexy song. Just a great, great song on the album. Now, Circles is one of the songs that I like most on this album for a very odd reason. I mean, yes, it is one of those... Uh, really dynamic songs with uh, very quiet verses and very loud rocking choruses. But one reason I really, really like it is because its intro strongly reminds me of a lot of the New Age stuff that I listened to back in the late 80s and early 90s. Believe it or not, it, it reminds me of New Age. I don't know why. Uh, but yes, that's another reason why I'm certain I would have been a huge Satriani fan from the start if I'd heard of this album back in the day. Now, most all of the other tracks on this album come in the form of upbeat rockers. Uh, we have Crushing Day, Ice Nine, and the title track. So that makes it, as I said, a, a bit of a, a less diverse of an album. And also, uh, Satriani used drum machines instead of real drums on at least half of the tracks. I think most of the tracks on this album. So that makes it something of an artifact of its day, you know, being from the late 80s. It's, you know, not as modern an album. It, it shows its age a little bit. But still, it's not totally without its eclectic moments, uh, although its most eclectic track is also its shortest. Midnight has a Latin feel to it with a, a fingering style that resembles Spanish guitar, so that makes it uh, stand out a bit. And the track it leads into, the album closer Echo, has a very unique time signature, almost like a waltz in a way, I guess. I'm, I'm maybe getting that wrong. But uh, that just makes it kind of a, a, a bit of an, an eclectic track, as I said. And we also hear a sitar briefly in Lords of Karma, which gives it a bit of an Indian or Middle Eastern feel. And you know how much I love sitar. So, uh, and of course, the, the title, Lords of Karma, makes it, uh, gives it the hint that it is a, an, an Eastern-influenced track. But all in all, honestly, this is an album not to be missed, really. It's, it's, as I said, it's the one that basically puts Satriani on the map. I'm sure at some point I'll eventually be doing a list of my favorite albums of the 80s, and this album will definitely be on it. It's just if, if you like, as I said, if you like rock music, but you don't mind not having lyrics to listen to or to sing along with, you can't do wrong with Joe Satriani. It's just fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I've got... As I said, the entire box set, so I've had a lot of Satriani to absorb, and I, I have not been disappointed, honestly, in any of his albums, really. But which of these two albums do I like more? Well, as, as iconic and fantastic an album as Surfing with the Alien is, if you're going for just the diversity within an album, I would have to say Shapeshifting is just fantastic. It's, it's one not to be missed, as I said, just an excellent, fast, fantastic album. And, well, yeah, Joe Satriani, what can I say? He is, I called him at the beginning of this video, an instrumental rock guitar god 
for a darn good reason. He is just just about the best there is. Well, I hope you guys had fun with this look at Joe Satriani now and then, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.